Hello guys, Winston here. Earlier this week was the conclusion of the Autodesk Cam Challenge. If you've been living under a rock or don't use Fusion 360, this one might have passed you by. But for those of you who aren't aware, the Autodesk Cam Challenge, previously the Fusion Cam Challenge, is a community contest where participants have to make something based on a given theme. This challenge's theme was an award based on either the Autodesk or Autodesk University logo. The winner would get entry to Autodesk University and IMTS 2018, and runner-ups would get some awesome swag and prizes as well. To get people started, Autodesk provided everyone with 3D models of their logos. Some people took the models and went completely nuts with them. Sadly, I was not one of them. I was in California for most of the time the cam challenge was active, and by the time I landed and got home, I had 36 hours to make my entry. When the contest was first posted, I had the idea of making some sort of plaque with LED backlighting, because LEDs make everything cooler. As it turns out, the folks over at Saunders Machine Works had the same idea, so they beat me to the punch. But I was never going to be able to match the quality of what they were doing, so I had to put my own twist on things. On Monday, when I got back to the shop, I immediately started searching for scraps I could use. I only had enough time to use the materials I already had on hand. I found a small piece of 3 quarter inch oak that would accommodate a logo up to 6 by 6 inches in size. In Fusion, I scaled up the logo model in X and Y to the desired size, but in the Z axis I scaled it up a little less. I wanted to flatten out the features a bit so I would have more material to work with on the backside. I extruded the profile of the back face out in order to thicken the model up to 0.72 inches. In this extra volume, I began hollowing out the logo to give me room to throw LEDs. This basically entailed using the offset tool to create areas to perform extruded cuts on. I also added in standoffs for attaching my logo to a backing board. Since I knew I'd be pre-drilling these holes later, I added a little divot to help locate the centers of each standoff. Now onto the cam portion of this project, which was kind of the important part being as this was a cam challenge. My machining strategy was pretty basic. I created a setup with no extra stock. This way, my stock's top surface would be coincident with the part's top surface after a facing operation. That facing operation would take my oak from 0.75 inches to 0.72 inches. Then I'd use a 3D toolpath to rough out the shallower part of the logo. Nothing too fancy here. Next up, I contoured the outer profile of my piece to make some room for subsequent toolpaths. I knew that these would extend beyond the silhouette of my logo, so removing the material around the logo now would give my detailing toolpaths an easier time. At this point, I did leave a 30 thou onion skin for work holding purposes. To clean up the non-flat surfaces, I would use two kinds of toolpaths, parallel and radial. You could get away with only using parallel, but I figured I'd have some fun with this, plus I think radial is a good fit in this case, more on that later. First up to machine were the fillets between the legs of the Autodesk triangle. This part had limited concavity, so you don't actually need to use a ball end mill here. To save time, I opted to stay with a square down cutting end mill and skip the tool change. Now the direction I prefer to go when doing this is with the gradient, that is, the direction of the steepest slope. If you were to machine parallel to the directions of the fillet, you would end up with a stepped texture on the walls. Visually, this sticks out like a sore thumb, but if you go perpendicular to the fillet, the shallow scalloping in the wall finish is almost imperceptible and really easy to sand smooth if need be. With a small step over, manual finishing is usually not even necessary. For the face of the left leg of the triangle, using a parallel operation would produce a lot of toolpath contact with the filleted areas. In wood, this probably wouldn't be an issue, but if you were machining aluminum, you might get some weird marks on the fillets as your end mill scratched away at extra material that was left over from the earlier parallel toolpath. With a radial toolpath using the intersection of the right and bottom legs of your logo as the center, your toolpath makes limited and predictable contact with your part at the edges of your machining boundary. Now, since I didn't feel like pulling out the 90 degree V-bit for chamfering, I threw a parallel toolpath on all my edges. I was going to have to do something like this on the inside edge anyway, because this face of the Autodesk logo has a roundover and not a chamfer. And finally, I'd come back with a finishing contour that went all the way through my stock. The setup of toolpaths was admittedly a little messy here. That's my fault, I was pretty hasty in defining my toolpaths, you could machine this piece with fewer total operations. By the way, if you're for some reason not doing this already, you can select arbitrary contours by clicking an edge and clicking on it again after it's been highlighted. This lets you define custom contours. Once you pick enough edges that Fusion realizes your intent, you can hit accept and the desired closed loop will be selected. You can also do this with open loops like I did on the backside. And I added a quick and dirty drilling operation to leave small indentations for finding the centers of the standoffs later. The backside was what I actually ended up machining first, by the way. If I machined the front first, I wouldn't be able to use tabs or have my part supported around its entire perimeter after the flip. On Tuesday at 6.25pm, less than 9 hours from the contest deadline, I posted my toolpaths and headed to the garage. I used double-sided tape for work holding and pocketed out the back of my logo.
I also machined some indexing pinholes. This was a simple contour toolpath with a single continuous helical ramp down to full depth, plus a finishing pass. I designed these to have a nominal diameter of 0.255 inches. I have no idea what they actually turned out to be, but it ended up being a really nice slip fit for my indexing pins. On the front face, everything worked really well. There were some spots where version 1.0 of my toolpath either missed or didn't leave the desired surface finish, so I posted a couple G-code fixes to address these issues. After popping out my Autodesk logo, I cleaned it up with some 220 grit sandpaper. Now, I needed something to mount the logo to. For that, I had some extra slats from my old state plaque project. I glued these to a sheet of plywood using a combination of wood glue for long-term strength and super glue to keep it together while it dried. On the back, I needed to drill out holes so I could run screws into my standoffs in the logo. Since it was impossible to match drill these by hand because you can't see them from behind, I ended up using the same drilling toolpath from earlier to transfer the desired hole pattern to my backing board. I drilled these out by hand to 3 16 of an inch to allow wood screws to pass through easily. I pre-drilled the standoffs to an eighth of an inch. Then I packed it full of LEDs, ran the remainder of the strip out the back, and plugged it in. This was my submission for the Autodesk Cam Challenge. Spoiler alert, I didn't win, and I didn't expect to in the face of so many overwhelmingly awesome entries. But I also wasn't thrilled with the piece I submitted. My LEDs were so bunched up inside that they weren't evenly backlighting the logo. Also, I'd cut certain parts of my piece so thin that light was seeping through the wood. So even though the challenge was over, on Wednesday I came back to address those last few nagging issues. First, I stuck some electrical tape on the back of my piece where I was getting light bleed through. Second, I cut out a polycarbonate piece that would sit in the back of my logo and help guide light out to the edges. Somehow, I'd had the foresight to recess my standoffs ever so slightly so that the polycarbonate could rest on the standoffs and be perfectly captivated by the walls of the logo. For this operation, I was using an 8th inch end mill single flute at 800 surface feet per minute with a chip load of 4 thou. And lastly, I cut my LED strips into shorter segments, tinned the leads, and painstakingly soldered the segments together. If you ask me to describe hell, it would involve soldering. I am terrible with circuits, so any electronics makers out there, hit me up for a collab so that you can do my dirty work for me. As luck would have it, I damaged the lead somewhere along the blue bus bar so I couldn't get pure blue to show up in two thirds of my logo. But that's actually okay because it almost looks intentionally Autodesk themed now. I want to thank you all very much for watching and encourage you to participate in future cam challenges if you haven't before. I know I kind of complicated my build by making it two-sided, but these can be great opportunities to practice some cam fundamentals like designing 3D toolpaths. I'll see you guys in a week or two with another CNC-related project.